I'm Mukunda Goswami. A few weeks ago in Philadelphia, I was speaking with Naranjan Maharaj. He was telling me about a very wonderful devotee named Ananta. Naranjan, while they were in the marathon, would just wait in the evening until Ananta came back and told what he described as amazing, incredible, ecstatic stories about him distributing Prabhupada's books during the marathon. The mood was so infectious that I thought, wow, I've got to get up there and meet this devotee and maybe even tape him. So a few days later, I was speaking on the telephone with Judah Karma about this, and he said, yeah, you should get up there and videotape this. So I called Naranja and I said, how about it? Can we get a video camera up there? He said he'd try. So I called back, I finally got up to Boston, he got a hold of the video camera, and we taped Ananta, Ram Roy, Bhakta Mickey, and Chaitanya Nitai, who was up there from Philadelphia. We interviewed them, telling stories about what they did in Sankirtan. And it was every bit as ecstatic as I hoped it would be. And that afternoon, this was on the 26th, the day after Christmas, we went out to Fanwell Hall and out to a parking lot, or a, a mall, parking lot where a place called Bradley's is, and videotaped these devotees in action. Then to add to that, a few days later, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Balabhadra Prabhu heard all this from me, and he got the bug and decided that he'd like to go out and videotape devotees as well. So it's another temple, like Boston, that depends on straight book distribution for most of its income. It's very nice devotees going out every day distributing books. So he taped the devotees, telling about their Sankirtan experiences. He went out and videotaped them in action. And that's what this tape you're about to see consists of. Now, in addition, Balabhadra Prabhu has footage of a Harinam party that went out on New Year's Eve in Atlanta and had an incredible experience. It speaks for itself. We hope you like this video. There may be some technical flaws, but we thought the most important thing was to get it out so we can really stress book distribution and let devotees see firsthand how alive and well book distribution is, at least in some parts of the country here, and draw inspiration to do the same. All of Audra Prabhu has kindly consented to continue working with me and putting out videos of this type, not only about book distribution, but about many other phases of the Sankirtan movement, with an aim towards focusing on Prabhupada's central instructions and strengthening the internal unity of the movement. So if you are interested in taking part in any way, if you have a video camera or you'd like to be involved in some other way, please don't hesitate to contact either myself or Bala Bhadra Prabhu in Atlanta. You can contact me here at the San Diego Temple. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Krishna, my name is Ananta Das, and we're at the Boston Temple. Today is the 26th of December, and um, this is an interview for uh, book distributors. Basically, what we've been doing is going out in book distribution since uh, the end of April, uh, distributing straight books as opposed to stickers. And now, the kind of books that we've been distributing is basically Srila um, Prabhupada's uh, hardback Bhagavad Gita, soft uh, Bhagavad Gita, the yes, Science of Self-Realization, the uh, Prabhupada book, the, uh, the Vedic series of um, Perfection of Yoga, Higher Taste, um, also Beyond Birth and Death. So basically most of the books that we have we, we distribute. And how we do it is basically going out either to the parking lots or to 
uh, or on street sankirtan or in the airports. Um, the main type of uh, distribution uh, we started around 10.30 and I finish around on a normal day 8, 8.30 and we do this book distribution and it's a little bit different from doing sticker sankirtan because it's a lot more enlivening. So now that we're, we're doing this uh, book distribution, we, we, we see that actually the consciousness of the devotees have become elevated and we're actually be able to become very determined to do our service. Actually, it's not so difficult. Uh, sometimes we have the conception that to go out and distribute straight books is very difficult and we only are going to do it to a certain type of people. And that actually we've been traveling around the country a little bit and doing it everywhere and everywhere. And even though sometimes you may and get less donations or distribute a few less books, still everybody's inclined to take. So, uh, a few stories in, in uh, relationship to this book distribution is one of them I had about six months ago we were in New Hampshire distributing books there. I was in a parking lot in Bradley's, I think it was. I remember this one lady and it was, I gave her a Back to Godhead uh, magazine what I do sometimes is that when I give them the book, if they don't like the book or they don't want the book, they don't have enough money, I give them a Back to Godhead magazine and say, oh, well, Hare Krishna, here's a Back to Godhead magazine for you. So this way they don't throw it away. So they'll take it. So I, I gave them the um, Back to Godhead magazine and then she became quite inspired. So, oh, I've seen these pictures before. I said, oh, yes, where? And she's one of my friends, actually. Uh, every Christmas. They, they take these pictures and they hang it on their Christmas tree <laughs> and they have it all around their house, they have these pictures of Krishna. They've never been to one of your centers, you know, but I know they have all these pictures all around the, uh, their house. And actually after that, then she uh, took a book for a friend, it was a Bhagavad Gita, and she bought the book and uh, was going to give it to their friend for Christmas and took the... Um, well, I don't think I was going to give it to Christmas, but they were going to give it to her or him. So we were distributing books and I distributed one to this lady and she gave some donation for it and then her husband came out and uh, she was trying to signal to him that oh I already got one but then Bhakti Mickey very quickly uh, distributed a book to him <laughs> and he got one as well and they both walked back to their cars with their Bhagavad Gita's in their hands <laughs> and drove off and, um, <clears throat> and then another time we were in Faneuil Hall I was uh, actually this was a few days ago and a little tired it was the end of the marathon, and um, this lady came up to me. It was a very rich lady, actually, and um, I was, was just leaning against the pole, feeling a little bit fatigued, and then uh, she asked me what I was doing. I said, oh, well, we're giving out books today, we're distributing books. I didn't think she would be particularly interested, but uh, she pursued it further, so I said, oh, well, this is a book we're distributing, Bhagavad Gita. So I showed the book to her, and she was quite surprised to see that it was a Bhagavad Gita, although I don't think she ever heard of it before. I think she knew it was yoga and meditation, though. And then, then she inquired further about the Hare Krishna movement, and I said, well, give a hundred dollars anyway. And um, she said, oh, well I, well, I can't give a hundred dollars, and she was looking in her purse for a hundred dollars. <laughs> and then she, anyway, she gave a donation, a nice donation. And then uh, she w said, she said she would come to the, uh, the feast sometime. I told her about the feast on Christmas. I, she actually gave uh, twenty, fifteen dollars. Yeah, and uh, she 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 walked away very enthusiastic with our Bhagavad Gita. And actually, every day we have people, uh, when we're distributing books, coming up to us and say, "Oh, I've read your Bhagavad Gita. I like it very much." And even one lady, they came up to me. Uh, she was with her husband. Uh, she said, "Oh, I have your Bhagavad Gita." And then she walked away. And then about two minutes later, she came back and she said, "Listen, my husband wants to buy one. It's, I, it's a real good book." So he bought one there and then. So every day we have people coming back up to us and say, yes, I like your books very much and very inspired by reading them. So really there's no doubt that people are reading these books and especially doing straight books is very inspiring because you, you really feel that actually um, Prabhupada, as Prabhupada said, they should buy it on the merit of the book. So here actually they are doing exactly that. They're buying it because they want the book. And even sometimes I would say, oh, are you going to read this book? And, I put, and the person would say, oh, I wouldn't buy it otherwise. Why do you think I gave the donation? So they're not really giving the donation just because of our programs, but actually they're buying because of the book. So that's very inspirational that actually people are really buying these books because they want to read them. And that's the whole point because there is something within that book they want to hear about because the devotee is trying to give them the message and actually they're able to hear a little bit. 
And of course, there are many other stories. What, what do you say about the book? What do I say about the book? Well, I can tell you what I say. I stop the people. If they're walking, you know, uh, I stop them and say, well, are you from around this area, from out of town? You know, some usual line that somehow you can stop them all. You're always stopping all the important people today. Something like that. And then once they're stopped, I ask them whether they like to read a lot or a little. Now, this line is a good line because it's not a yes or no line. It's good because they have to give some answer. So uh, they give the answer, and then according to that, even if they say, oh, I only read a little, still I put a Bhagavad Gita in their hand. Mm -hmm. And if, and you know, and I say, oh, we're passing out these little pamphlets if they only like to read a little. And then then put a Bhagavad Gita in their hand. And then uh, they say, so, so what do you do? And then and they can tell me their occupation. And then from their occupation, I try to relate the book a little bit to them. I say, well, a general line will be, um, well, this book is explaining why we only use 10% of our brain as scientists are always telling us. It talks about the other 90%, why bad things happen to good people. Why are we all rushing around in the world today? Is it, there's one place I work called Faneuil Hall. Everybody's rushing up and down. So I stop these people and just say, look at all these people. They're rushing up and down so fast. No one has a little time to think. And if we're thinking, we're always thinking about, you know, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So I tell them to think a little bit about, other, you know, who thinks about other things. And then they, then they think, oh, yes, that's true. So I said, anyway, what's your name? So I get their name, and then I say, well, this is what we're doing, Bill. We're asking for a donation for our benefit drive. Oh, give what you can. And because they, they've got a book, and they like the book, and they say, oh, it's, you know, it's a pretty thick book. And if they're about to give one dollar or two dollars, they say, well, you know, they go for a 15 in the stores. And then they generally give five dollars for the book. Um, I have a feeling, they generally don't ask too much, but I, I have a feeling that most people know, I'd say, you know, seven out of ten people know. Because most people know Bhagavad Gita, especially, you know, in these places we're working, that many people will know Bhagavad Gita. And even in the, in the parking lots, people know Bhagavad Gita. And they, they associate with the Hindu religion, the Eastern religion, and they, then they're wondering what's this white guy doing out here who's not, you know, Hindu. So they think, well, he must be a Hare Krishna. And I, I experience many people when they walk away and say, hey, do you know he was a Hare Krishna? Like that. And actually, you know, they're not put off. And um, I think the whole idea is to present the book nicely. You present it nicely and become their friend. Then they're, they're quite inspired to read it. Because they're not, they're not thinking of all the bad press, they're not thinking of everything else. They're just thinking, oh, this looks like a nice book, you know, that's quite interesting. And also, you know, if you present it in a way that um, you're not saying, oh, have you heard of the Hare Krishnas? We're the one with the shaved heads, you know. But they don't get an you know, impression straight away. They're actually able to, just with their intelligence, understand, oh, this has got some interesting philosophy in here. So I'll present it like that. And, and of course, we also get people's names. That people have... Uh, we're very interested in our dinner programs or coming to the temples. We get their names and I write them letters. And in this way, actually, we're able to have a uh, more of a community because uh, this is something we want to try and develop. And this, with this straight book distribution, you're basically telling them who you are straight away by giving them a book. And then, and then many people say, oh, you're Hare Krishna? We go, yeah. And they say, oh, well, would you like to get our mailing, you know, be on our mailing list? And they say, yes, get their name. So we have many devotees who are very expert at getting many names and we're able to send our newsletters out to them in this way not only the books going out but we also have backup and the books are actually uh, there in their homes and they also come to the temple one thing is that people they definitely know us so they like our books there's more small books it's a statistic more small books have been distributed in America than practically any other country in the world so most people certainly know about us in America. We're all pervasive, so to speak. So when they hear our books, I, I, when they see our books, then, then they know us. I approached one lady on a parking lot. It was a really tough beginning for the day, and I was really praying. That's one important thing in book distribution, one nice aspect. So I approached this one lady, and she said, I said, excuse me, miss, you just finished your shopping? And uh, she said, oh, no, no, you're a Muni. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm a Hare Krishna. She said, oh, you're Hare Krishna. I said, yeah, we stand on Bhagavad Gita. She said, oh, Bhagavad Gita. You know, when she took the Bhagavad Gita, she happened to be, uh, you know, in the 60s. She heard of our movement and, you know, saw Sri the Prabhupada on TV and like that. And she was, uh, you know, she was more or less into impersonalistic 
type things, but still, she had heard of us and she was very appreciative uh, of our books uh, because of that, some kind of spiritual advancement. So they know that we're different from other groups because we're very theistic. That's one thing we have Krishna behind us. So uh, there's no question of being intimidated out on Sankirtan or something like that. The devotee shouldn't feel like, oh, it's so hard to go out and distribute books. We have no faith anymore. You know, we have Krishna. We have Sri the Prabhupada, who's undoubtedly the greatest person to walk the earth since Lord Chaitanya himself. So, uh, you know, we sh shouldn't feel intimidated in any way to go out on Sankirtan and distribute books. Um, there's also another story. I, did you want to question? I just remember one man who, you can approach anyone practically because, you know, they're all spirit souls. So you can approach anyone. This is Lord Chaitanya's mercy. So I remember approaching one old man, black man. We were just in the middle of a, a parking lot in Bloomfield, Connecticut. And uh, it happens to be a largely uh, a black population. So there's one old man who looked, you know, down and out. You never know. And uh, so we were just approaching anyone. This day is Christmas marathon, so we were really enlivened. So I give him a book, and he really, really appreciated it. He said, it's, he said, it's young people out here, right? Told him about the book and who we were. And he said, oh, it's young people like you who are really inspiring for us. You happen to be 66 years old. And uh, he said, because you guys are for real, because you practice what you preach. And this is really, he said, and this is, you know, because I told him how we were celibate and we didn't kill and like that, how we were monks. And uh, he, was, he was so appreciative how we were dedicating everything to God. So... Uh, and then, even though he looked so down and out, he said, I, on, I only have $12, and he gave me 8 So I mean, he was so appreciative of our books. So you run into so many people. Actually, they want our books, because the soul is naturally attracted to Krishna. It's just a natural situation. So we shouldn't, uh, there shouldn't be any feeling of hesitancy, although sometimes the mind is very strong. But we shouldn't feel intimidated we have Krishna. Well, mostly we've just been doing Bhagavad Gita. So I always take some pocket books too, because there's always persons who already have Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so, I always take something else, like definitely Prabhupada Leela's, so that people who already know about our movement, well, here's the inside story of the Hare Krishna movement. Here's how it began. Here's how it was started so purely. There's no motivations involved, like people think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the single volume. And also SSRs. This is the practical application of the Bhagavad Gita philosophy in modern day. Uh, and small books, if we have them, we didn't have them for this marathon so much. But definitely small books are really nice because people don't feel intimidated when they get this huge book. It's just a little book. Of course, they don't give as much Lakshmi for it usually. But uh, those books are always nice because there's a variety. Oh, here's yoga, a perfection of yoga. And this isn't just about... Uh, physical health and strength and beauty. As a matter of fact, it's not all about physical, <laughs> not at all about that. But it's about inner strength and beauty of, of mind, like that, understanding ourselves. And when we actually have some understanding of ourselves or some inner beauty, and just by our association, this is my standard presentation for this book, and just by our association, you know, whether we work in an office or whatever our job is, then you can actually spread that to others in this way, elevate elevate society in some way, you know, just by associating. My name is Bhagavad Kurana Das. Um, yeah, we were actually the same day before we got out to the parking lot. We uh, were going on the subway and we, um, we here in Boston, we were carrying a push push cart and um, well actually can't say we because I have a back problem so I wasn't carrying it. A cash ripper was carrying it. <laughs> so we were going down the stairways and um, there's this young uh, young black boy um, 20 years old or something and a cash ripper I think uh, and his body's like 19 years old. And you know the, this uh, other boy, um, he saw us, and um, he just asked Kikeshra, "Can I help you with a with a pushcart?" 
And that was pretty amazing because um, he was only like tw 20 years old, I think. So was, <clears throat> he helped him with the push cart down the stairs. And uh, also he had, a, he had a, I think, a Malcolm X uh, paperback or something. So I said, oh, what are you reading? He said, Malcolm X. So I handed him a higher taste. And uh, he opened it up, and he, actually he couldn't he he didn't he couldn't uh, speak anything. We were just telling him things, and um, he just walked off with the book. Yeah, is so people are always taking books. Yeah. This is Fuck the Mickey. Uh, he can tell you his story better than me. But uh, he just came here a few, just when I first got here. He, a couple days later, he just moved into the temple and he expressed how material. This was just about a month ago, four weeks, three weeks ago. And how material life was so difficult and searching for God. He had seen devotees chanting in Boston Commons. Sorry, now I'm also, we meet people a lot on book distribution. Say, I saw you chanting somewhere. You know, wherever, and they're always so appreciative. This chanting is so wonderful. They're, like, they're immediately attracted, as you were explaining in class. So it's so nice. So I know he has some nice stories, too. My name is Bhakta Meki, and I am a new devotee. And um, by the grace of Krishna, I've been um, given an opportunity to. Um, to travel with the Sankatan movement. And recently we were down in uh, Hartford, Connecticut for three or four weeks. And my role down there basically was, um, you know, washing the pots and pans and um, doing the laundry. And I basically accepted that as being, you know, a new member, a new devotee. And uh, I was just pleased to be able to be down there and uh, experience the, um, the stories when they would come back that they, um, experience during the days of, you know, distributing books. And I realized um, how um, spiritually fulfilled they seemed, how happy they were, and in the midst of um, a total surrender. And I just kept saying, um, I can't wait to go out there and experience that myself. So I was basically um, spending a couple hours a day trying to um, read as much as possible just so I could have a, um, a basic understanding of the philosophy. And I was given the opportunity to um, to go out and distribute some books, and um, I I just totally enjoyed the engagement. At first, it was it was difficult because I, you know I had never uh, experienced anything like that. But as the day went on, I I realized how um, uh, I realized a lot of things. Basically, I realized how 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 much people are suffering out there and how badly they need these books and how badly they need to realize that um, the spiritual way of life is the, is the answer to, um, to our problems. When you first distributed your first book, what did it feel like? What actually happened? How did it feel like after hearing that? Well, I realized at that point that it wasn't me doing it <laughs> because I, I, just ba I just basically went up and, you know, I, I said, um, excuse me, sir, um, I'm stopping everybody in the area and I'm asking the famous question, do you like to read a lot or a little? And the person replied, um, you know, I like to read. So I um, gave him a Bhagavad Gita and I just turned it over and explained different people like Henry David Thoreau and, and Gandhi and um, Emerson. And I said, these people, um, you know, got a lot of inspiration from this book. And basically the person just looked at the book and, and I really didn't know too much about the philosophy, but, you know, <laughs> You could just see, um, you know, the power of Krishna, that um, some something inside of them was um, contemplating the book, and the person just said, um, "Yes, I think I'll take this," and gave me like five dollars, and so that I just realized so much that day, and I was I was prep prior to going out saying, you know, the important thing is not to worry about the results, that. Um, just to go out there and you know surrender and, and uh, be involved in the engagement and the service to Krishna was in itself the uh, the um, the fulfilling thing. And then when I went out there and realized that you know if we just you know like another um, Prabhu had said if we just 
um, present the books nicely and present ourselves nicely as um, being people who basically care and and that we're, we're sensitive about um, what's going on out there. That if we just keep it simple t like that, at least I had to keep it that simple based on uh, my knowledge of the philosophy, I realized that, that these books, um, they just, uh, they go out. And I, I was explaining, I was explaining one of the books, what I was doing in a mall, shopping mall, to a security officer who had come over and asked me if I was bothering people. And I said, oh no, I'm not bothering people. Um, and I was explaining a little bit about the philosophy and he said, well, okay, you know, just, just check in. And I went to, I went to walk away. I was walking back into the parking lot to, to find some other people. And this gentleman came running up behind me and he said, excuse me, sir. And he had a $10 bill waving in his hand. And he says, uh, what do you have there? I said, Bhagavad Gita. He says, oh, he goes, I'm looking for one of those. Can you give me one? And I said, sure, and I pulled out a Bhagavad Gita and he gave me the $10, you know, and I hadn't even, I didn't even see him or talk to him. So it was just amazing to see all these people that were just meant to get these books, um, you know, just walking into our life and um, that we had the, the, um, the fortune, uh, the good fortune to be able to, you know, present that to them. I had a, um, a, a young gentleman about um, 15 years old came up to me and he asked me if, um, if the Hare Krishna movement had Jewish gurus. <laughs> now me being a new devotee and not knowing much, um, I said probably, you know, I, it's, <laughs> and um, he just smiled and he says, I heard you have Jewish gurus. And I said, yes, we do. He's 15 years old. And, and I, I says, you know, so I was talking to him and he was saying that he had met some devotees up in Canada. And he had asked a question about, I think he maybe had a friend who had leukemia, you know, why some people have leukemia and others don't. And um, he said, philosophically, this Hare Krishna movement um, f answered most of those questions that I had. And I says, how old are you? And he said he was 15 years old. And I said, do, do you want to live a spiritual way of life? And he said, yes. He says, I, I met devotees out in California and, and up in Canada. And as a matter of fact, I was um, down on Commonwealth Ave in Boston today. And I, I thought the temple was closed, so I didn't um, go up and knock on the door. But he said um, he was looking to live a spiritual way of life. And I asked him, did his parents know? And, and he said, yes, they know. And so he, he didn't have any money on him, so I just said, well, I'll give you a Bhagavad Gita because you, you show so much interest. And he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't take it because he didn't have the money. And I kept trying to tell him to take it, take it. And he finally took the book and he was just very, very grateful. And he walked away. Well, <clears throat> I just wanted to finish it up and say that we've heard from many devotees and many of their realizations and to see actually how these books can be distributed in, in a variety of ways. So we're hoping that this, um, this, this video will actually inspire devotees to go out and actually distribute more books because the more we feel inspired to do this, the more we please Srila Prabhupada. And actually we can see sometimes we may be on the mental platform a little bit or on the platform where we'd like to go out but we don't feel so enthusiastic. So hopefully this video will inspire devotees in that way to actually go out and uh, try because if we, if we just go out and try it's like here in Boston we really have so much experience and we really didn't have anybody to teach us we went out and tried and because we went out we were doing traveling Sangatam since April and now it's the December we've been doing traveling Sangatam just going out in a van distributing books around the country because really we we didn't have any, any option just to distribute books we we went out and tried, and at the beginning the results weren't very big. We weren't doing so, so wonderfully. But then as we just kept going, and as you just read more and more books, went through more and more austerities, Krishna reciprocated with us in so many different ways. So I feel that actually, if, if, if anybody is feeling inspired to go out and distribute books, that just to, uh, to do it and to keep going. Because if you do that, then actually results will be there. And uh, we, we can see by these realizations of the devotees and just by the stories actually, how enlivened everybody becomes. And not only do, do, do the devotees themselves that are going out feel enlivened, but actually the temple also. It's like last night when we all came back, we had a big festival, we had an hour and a half kirtan. Very enlivening, actually. And this whole mood that the, we're actually distributing books is very strong. 
And this is actually certainly unifies as the whole uh, mood. What was your biggest score? My biggest score? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, about four, three days ago, my Krishna's grace, we were able. I was able to do um, 104 Bhagavad Gita's and 300 Lakshmi points. That was, um, we started at 11 o'clock in the morning and we finished at around 8.30, uh, 8.30 at night, taking some time for Pishanam. So actually it can be done. It's not that any of us are that special, it just actually can be done if we go out there and put the, put the hours and the time in and try very hard. Hare Krishna. people coming out and showing them Krishna books and I had some small books and these two young boys you know like older teenagers came out and I showed them a Krishna book and explained a little bit about the book to them but I didn't have to say very much just after they're seeing the book they said that they were Christians and they weren't interested they couldn't accept what we had to say and they couldn't accept the books but uh, just prior to that I had had the realization and experiencing a little bit of frustration at, at people's negative responses, but at the same time, it was enlivening that some books were going out. But I had the realization how how ignorant these people were. That here we are, we have the pastimes of God. He came and he performed these wonderful pastimes, the Supreme Lord. And they don't even know about when God came to earth. I mean, you know, this describes the activities of God when he actually came to earth 5,000 years ago. He performed these wonderful pastimes and hardly anybody knows about him. It's completely amazing of all the ecstasy that's in these books. It's astounding. And one guy, he, he just immediately changed and, and said, well, look, I'll tell you what. Um, will $10 be enough for a book? I, I'm going to get it. And he bought a book. He bought a Krishna book. And uh, also, uh, once, another day, we were at the traffic light handing out PTGs and uh, telling people um, we're distributing knowledge of God in this time of need. And there were these two businessmen in the front of the seat of a car and they were going by and uh, the driver just spontaneously said uh, um, I don't know God I need to know him. And, uh, and he bought a book he bought a magazine he gave a donation and drove on. So, um, there's one particular uh, <coughs> pastime that um, uh, Lord Chaitanya's mercy I was allowed to actually participate in. Um, it was in the uh, Christmas marathon that just happened. And we were at the airport. And uh, actually, we had been distributing all day long. And all day long, I was thinking about the, how important the activity that we're performing, you know, that uh, distributing these Bhagavad Gita's is the essence, actually, of spiritual life. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that this is the book we should study. And, and just by someone receiving one of these books, I was thinking that actually their whole material life was, was going to be finished. And um, one thing though, for Sangatana devotees, <coughs> the thing we have to overcome though is rejection. And a lot of times, sometimes we may think, and it's also been a little prevalent, prevalent in our movement for some time, is that there's actually 
the people are not really so much interested anymore like they used to be, you know, that that was just the golden era, the golden days, you know, that no one's really interested. But um, all these are simply misconceptions because there are always people who want to take the Krishna consciousness. So it was the end of the evening and all the devotees were actually packing up all the books. I thought, well, let me just stick it out for a little longer. So um, there was a lady, an um, uh, older lady, about 40, and her son, he was, he was pretty tall. So they're walking, and I said, uh, I said, uh, congratulations, miss, uh, here's your Bhagavad Gita. So actually, I proposed the, the gentleman. I said, sir, here's your Bhagavad Gita. And he said, um, he said, no, I don't want the book. And then, um, and then I was trying to explain to him about the book, and he said, no, I don't want the book, you know. And um, his mother then said, um, he said, George, George, what's wrong with you? Just take the book. <laughs> I was like, wow. Because generally on Sager Town, it's the, we always try to zoom in on, on the young people and try to avoid the parents, you know, or, or try to get the parents going down the escalator before we, you know, we approach the younger people because the parents always just kind of like grab and just like, you know, pull them away. So we actually, I said one person. But here was the complete opposite. Here was an older woman, about 40, you know. They're going, actually, they're going to New York. And she said, uh, she was saying, George, just take the book. And then, and, you know, George is like, you know, he took the book, you know, so he's holding the book, he's like, you know, like that, you know, and uh, he's like, oh, mom, I don't want this book. He goes, George, don't you know who this is? These are the Hare Krishnas. These are great people. You know, I used to take, I used to go to their temple in New Orleans, and I used to go there and eat. They have wonderful vegetarian food. George, just listen to me and just take the book. And then, <laughs> and then so I kind of, you know, transcendentally capitalized on the situation. So I had a Krishna book, and I was carrying both. I said, well, here, take this one, too. This is what Krishna did before he spoke the Bhagavad Gita. And she said, sure, no problem, just take it, George. So he, George had both the books, and he was like, we're lucky, you know, nah. And I said, I said, come on, George, just listen to mom, you know, she's always right. You know? <laughs> I just tried to get into that whole situation. And then, um, so then uh, mom said, uh, he said, come on, let's go to the restaurant. She goes, let's go to the restaurant. You know, I gotta get, we'll get you something, we'll get you boys something to eat. And, uh, and, then, we'll, and then we'll pick up, and I'll pay for these books. I was thinking, so I'm looking, I'm looking at her and the situation, I'm looking at the devotees, and they're all packing up, they're ready to go. And then I was thinking, well, gosh, I know I should go in the restaurant, because we only have certain designated areas to preach in. And I thought, well, let me just, you know, ride, catch this wave, you know, of, uh, of mercy here. So then we followed this little restaurant, you know, the whole time she's talking about, you know, the devotees, how wonderful they are, they're really great people. And then, you know, so she takes, so George got some, you know, uh, pepperoni pizza. And then, and then mom goes, so she comes to me, she goes, she goes, take whatever you want. You want, you want some pizza too? I said, well, uh, she, goes, she goes, oh yeah, that's right. You're, you guys are vegetarians. You don't eat this stuff. And I said, yeah, I, I think I'll just pass, you know. <laughs> and then, um, then she, uh, then she, you know, she paid for the, for the food, you know, and then we're standing there and uh, he had both the books and, um, and then, and then she's going to give me the donation for the books. Meantime, George, <laughs> He's sitting there and goes, he's like, you know, opening up the books, you know, he's like pulling both of them. And uh, he goes, but mom, you know, I I'm not going to read these books, mom. It's just that. He goes, she goes, George, when are you going to start listening to your mother? You have to read these books, George. These are wonderful <laughs> books. They'll actually help you in your life. And George, if you don't read them, then I'm going to read them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, so then, she, uh, then she gave me the donation and she took both the books. And then, uh, and then I said, okay. I said, I said, see you, mom. You know, she goes, okay, son. It was really, it's really wonderful work that you're doing, and I, I wish you the best. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really the book to but the first time when I went to the airport, uh, actually it was my second day when I actually saw that, uh, I realized that it was not me who was distributing books, it was some Krishna, or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> like, uh, uh, it was already lunchtime, already passed. And uh, I was working with Jai Gautam Prabhu, and he was, uh, he had to finish his rounds, and he also, like, nobody was there. And I was sitting there, back at the counter, taking my prasada. So, and nobody, actually nobody was passing by. And then uh, suddenly one, one guy was just passing by, and looking here and there, as a Hare Krishna. <laughs> and he came back, and do you have Hare Krishna devotee? He said, yes. Uh, what are you doing here? So I'm selling books. So I'm like, uh, which book you want to take? I said, uh, and then he, he said, then I said what, what are the books? I said, it's his Propa, that was the only book I had. And then at uh, that time, then he, the guy took a book and then he said, two dollars, that, that was my first book so far. And then I got, I got enthusiastic and I became alive and I jumped forward and asked him, anyone who's coming and I stopped him then. 
And, one, and then after that, I, I, again, I, got, I got fried, and I was talking to one person. I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to one person. I said, uh, it's real bad. "Well, uh, uh, this is a Simon Bhagavatam. The only Bhagavatam book I had. Here's Simon Bhagavatam. It says about the past and this Kali Yoga, and then uh, so many things that like about. I don't know." Or like uh, I'm distributing these books to people who are coming here who like to have them. I said no. I said a friend. Another girl is more passing, but she said, "What are you giving?" I said, "I have a book. Simad Bhagavatam. You have? Can you give for five dollars?" I said, "Yeah, okay." I gave him a hard bound book. No, I want that Simad Bhagavatam which I was giving. <laughs> so I was not preaching to anyone, and people coming to me and buying the books from me. <laughs> we were working in the uh, airport, uh, and a young girl walked up, and her, her husband was uh, in the military. And uh, she, I approached her with a Bhagavad Gita and I offered a Bhagavad Gita and told her it was about uh, reincarnation and meditation from ancient India. And she, uh, she said, oh, this should, this should be very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I would like to, uh, I'd like to give you a donation. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. Um, if you, uh, if you throw in, uh, if, if I give you $12, will you take my, my bag to the, uh, uh, to the next concourse, it's very heavy, and I said, well, if, if you make it 15, then, then we'll call it a deal. So uh, she said, okay. And so we went down the concourse, we went down the escalator, and um, <clears throat> I was preaching to her the whole way about uh, uh, reincarnation, and she had some nice questions. She asked, well, isn't it a fact that, that you come back as a, as a human being, uh, it's a guarantee? And I said, well, no, it's not. There's 8,400,000 species of life. And um, you make him back as as, uh, as an ant, or I mean, you make him you make him back in any one of those species. And she said, "Oh, you mean that means I could come back as an ant, and in a couple of days I could get I could be squished?" And I said, "Yes, that's that's definitely a possibility that could happen." And, uh, and then we got off the train, and we were going back up the escalator uh, to the next concourse. And she said, "She, uh, I was telling her that, that actually an ant's life a lifetime." Is they live a hundred years, but to us it only seems it would only be a few days, and that every uh, form of life within the universe lasts um, lives a hundred years, though they are on different time scales. And in the higher there's there's higher planetary systems, and and those uh, living entities uh, they live a hundred years, but to us it seems like fifteen thousand years. She, she was very impressed by that, and I noticed that a couple other people were were also paying attention to me speaking to her, and uh, <coughs> so we were going up. We're continuing up the escalator, and I said, Lord Brahma, uh, there's living entities on the highest planet, and they live for approximately 311 trillion years, according to our uh, time scale. And uh, so when one fellow said, uh, and these two men were listening, they were both smiling, and one guy said, well, they probably don't have any cholesterol up there. <laughs> In learning how to do book distribution, I've been meditating on the one verse in the Bhagavad Gita a lot where it says that Krishna Krishna promises that if we meditate on his form with devotion, that he will preserve what we have and give what we lack. So that's what I need a lot of airports, so I've been thinking about that. So there was this one college student, and I was showing him a Prabhupada, softback Prabhupada book, and he was real interesting, interested, and he was listening, but he wasn't really convinced to take a book. So, sort of the last resort, I said, "Well, what is your uh, favorite?" Oh, he told me he was a he told me he was a history major. So I said, "Well, what's your favorite period of history?" And he said, "Colonial America, definitely." And I said, "Oh yes, that is a wonderful time in history. So many profound ideas were given were arose at that time." I said, "Emerson, Thoreau." Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, many people were influenced by these books. Look here at Bhagavad Gita, Thoreau, let's see what he said. And the, the boy just got so interested, he got it, he read the book, and immediately gave five dollars and took the book. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Recently I was distributing books with the Boston Sanctum Party. After our Christmas marathon, we went down to, um, to Florida to distribute books because it was kind of cold. So we worked this Kmart, and uh, it was time for us to go, it was around 7.30. So I met this lady, she seemed like really in anxiety. And so I went up to her and I distributed, uh, coming back. I asked, do you do a lot of reading or a little? She said, oh, I don't do very much reading because I work very much. So this is why she was in anxiety, she was really tired. So 
So anyway, she took the book. Actually, she didn't want the book. I kept insisting. He goes, no, 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 I can't take the book. I'm really busy and all this and that. And so I didn't, take, she, I didn't give her the book again. I didn't want to impose. So I talked a little bit about the book, how actually it frees one from anxiety and it makes one peaceful because uh, it lets you realize how actually some of the anxieties in today's world is actually just illusion. It's there, but it shouldn't be. And so she goes, well, I'll just give you $2. So she gave me $2. And I said, please take the book. So she took the book. And then, so another came by and he picked us up. And so we left. And so the next day we went out on, on, um, to the airport. I don't work the airport very much. I worked it once or twice. But we went there and I was working the airport trying very hard. It's, it's a little different type of sankata. And so I was working for about an hour and a half. And it seemed like this lady was watching me for a long time, about 100 feet away. And I kept looking at her and then I would just, she kept working. And I noticed she was actually really looking at me. So about an hour and a half after working there for a while, she, she kind of went like that. So I said, this is kind of strange. <laughs> so uh, I ignored it. And, uh, I just kept working. And, uh, and then 15 minutes later, the person bought a book, a Bhagavad Gita. So then I, I noticed she was looking again, so she went like that. So I went over this time. I said, oh, maybe I could distribute a book. Because it was getting kind of heavy. You know? Airports work at a certain time. A lot of people come, and then it stops, and then it goes again. So I went over. It was kind of quiet. and. Uh, the, more, the closer I got to her, it kind of reminded me of something that someone I saw before, and it was a lady I saw at the Kmart. And she goes, Remember? And she was like, In bliss. So uh, she goes, Yeah, I was watching the people, and I counted how many people rejected you, and how many people actually accepted the book. She goes, You're doing okay. So she gave some hints on how actually I can improve my sanctity. <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, she said, You know, I was thinking a lot what you said about anxiety and all this and that. I said, Yeah, yeah. So I kept preaching to her. And uh, she took a Bhagavad Gita and she gave $5. And uh, she was really interested in what we're doing. And I told her about our tradition, how we wear robes, and we have kirtans and festivals like that. She goes, oh, that sounds really nice. So I invited her to a Sunday feast. She goes, should I bring something? And I found it kind of strange how actually she wanted an she wanted to bring an offering. Should I bring some fruit or flowers? So I said, actually, that's our custom that we, that actually a lot of the Indian people, they bring flowers and fruits like this. So I said, yeah, you can do that. It's very nice. And uh, she goes, should I wear something? Should I, is there something I should wear? And I said, well, just come very simple. I said, most women, you know, they, they just real simply and they cover their hair. She goes, why is that? She goes, because it's part of the custom that a woman is real chaste. She goes, oh, okay. So she started writing down things that she wanted to get. She said, I <laughs> a, a handkerchief to cover my hair. Is it good that if I put it this way? And I said, oh, you want to that's okay. You don't have to do all those things now. And she goes, oh, I'd like to. It sounds, I'd like to fit in. So my realization is that uh, Krishna is actually guiding the very sincere people. But we have to go out there and give this mercy, just like we got. If we think, how did we get it from a book? Or from some person who read a book who told us about the book. So the book is very important. It's the basis. Okay, this was on the Christmas marathon. So was working with the business uh, concourses, big concourse, and at the airport. So this guy came uh, down the hall, kind of down the corridor, and I approached him. I had to, I had to uh, show my Bhagavad Gita, I believe it was, in my hand. So I approached him and told him about the book, how this Shema Bhagavad Gita was breathing at the sun and has arisen and has aged darkened when people are perplexed and destroyed about the purpose of life. And so he said, well, I'll get it next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So you know, I approach some more people, and so the same guy he goes up the hall, you know, comes back, but this time he goes to the book stand where our books were, and I saw him, and I immediately, you know, you know, later on, you know, try to get to him. And so I talked to him about the book, told him about how Prabhupada was the reason for bringing these books here, told him, showed him about Prabhupada and Ramachur. So he looked at a few more books. He says, I want this to be picked up science civilization. He says, uh, he says, I don't know why I'm doing this. You know, like that. And he said, oh, I don't have much money. He gave said, I'll give you ten dollars for a science civilization. Is that enough? I said, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh he gave him a science civilization, a problem part. And like I told him that this was spiritual, like I'm not telling you to do anything. What am I saying? 
So it's something that comes from inside. I told him how this is spiritual knowledge. Uh, this is genuine and a spiritual process. Like, no one is telling you to do anything, but yet it's genuine. You're giving money and taking books. So like that. And so it was just time to get the book. So for a science civilization, he gave a $10 donation. Plus, and I threw in some bonus books for him. Mm -hmm. So he went away happy. He said, I would read them. And he wrote. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, actually, the thing that I have to share with um, all the devotees is a, a confession, more or less. At the beginning of the Christmas marathon, uh, the temple president of our temple said, well, no more stickers, no more hats, just straight book distribution. And Actually, years ago, I had done book distribution for years at the airport, but over the years, of course, I, I had been doing stickers and was focusing more on Lakshmi and pretty much an incognito devotee. So when he, uh, when, you know, this was finally decided that we were just going to do straight books, I went through complete withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I, I mean, I was really suffering. I was because I'm just so used to the sticker line and all of this. I mean, I was completely contaminated, actually. Book distribution here at the airport is completely ecstatic. I haven't been here in a long time, and I'm just getting back into it again because we have more spots here at the airport. So today, um, I met this man who happened to be a salesman, and he was appreciating what I was saying about the Bhagavad Gita. And he says, so this is Eastern philosophy? And I said, uh, yes, it is. And, and he said, uh, he says, well, what is it? Like Hare Krishna? And I says, yes, that's exactly what it is. And, and I says, this is such an active book. I said, you really get a lot out of it. It'll help you in your practical life. I says, it's philosophy, spiritual life, so much understanding. I says, it'll really help you. So he, he was really enlivened by the whole book. And when I flipped it over on the backside and I was showing him Srila Prabhupada, he says, uh, so this man is what? He says, he's your guru? And I go, right, he is. He says, well, if I read this book, what, he can be my guru too? And, and I says, absolutely. I says, whatever level you want this book to be for you, it can be. So anyhow, he says, great. And he just came over and, and gave $5 donation. Uh, he was from Los Angeles and he was just so receptive. It was completely ecstatic. So the thing I've, I, I'm realizing here at the airport is that we should just approach everyone completely enthusiastically. And those souls that are fortunate souls, Lord Chaitanya will send them to you. Yeah.